within your application, let's say you create a new contact and you just fill out some of the forms. And when you get to the birthday, you want your date picker to pop up. So clicking on it, you can then select the date that you need to select and then you can create your contact. However, you want to make your application a bit more user friendly. So whenever they go to edit the contact record, instead of taking you to a whole separate page, it just pops up a model. So when we click on the edit button, it pops up a model. And then here we have our birthday. However, we still want to click into the date field and have it pop up the date picker. So looking behind the scenes to see how we get that model to pop up, within my application's layout file, I just have an empty div with an ID called remote container. If we look at our index, the link to the edit action on our contacts, we're passing in the remote true, which will render the JSIERB edit action file. And if we look at the edit.js.erb file, you'll see that we're just setting the contents of the remote container and we're rendering the partial edit. We're then calling on the ID edit contact and we're calling model show. So that's how we're getting the model to show up and it's making a call back to our server. So we're not having to render out all of the models for every single record that we have listed. So to get our day picker to show up, we could simply just add in the daypicker.each on the class and then call this dot picker. If we save this file and return to our application, we can close this model and then we can open it up again and we can now see that we have our date picker. This works now because we had just injected the contact model into our remote container and the loop through each one of the date picker classes had already executed, so we need to call that again. And while this is only three lines of code, it does start to violate the dry principle where you don't want to repeat yourself. So I had just simply copied this from our application.js file, but now I have to maintain this line of code in multiple places. So if we want to make a change later with our date picker to take in more of the options, maybe selecting a year from a dropdown list, we're going to have to manage this and make changes in multiple places. So within our application.js file, you'll see that I had just added in the lines of code to create the date picker. You really want to avoid adding stuff into your application.js file for the simple reason that one, it creates messy code. We don't have access to the JavaScript functions that we need to initialize our date picker. So what I'll do is I'll just take the few lines of code that we're calling our date picker on. I'll create a new file called datepickerinit.js and I'll just paste in the code here. Notice I did not copy the TurboLinks code because that is going to be called within our application.js file. You can extract this over to initialization file or something like that, but for now I'm just going to leave it here. Within our edit.jsierb file, we'll just delete these lines of code and we'll replace it with the get script. And you'll see here that I'm injecting in some Ruby code and we're calling the asset path for the date picker init file. And that's going to reference the file that we had just created. The problem is that when you go to compile your assets on a production environment, you're going to need the digest that's created as well. And using the asset path here will allow you to do this. Since we are referencing a specific JavaScript file, we now need to go into our config initializers assets file. And then you'll see here that they have a pre-compile additional assets. And we can just copy this line, uncomment it. And then instead of the search.js, we can add in our daypicker init.js. And now the get script will successfully find this even once we have compiled our assets. And once you make this change, make sure that you do restart your Rails application to pick up the new file. So going back to our application, we can refresh our home screen and then we can edit a contact and you'll see that the day picker is now working. So if you find yourself having to work with complicated JavaScript objects, then you may want to look into this approach. I have used this for other things like the Google Maps API as well as data tables and I've been really pleased with the results. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.